defeat Butch T. And then shortly after, there was a guy named Ed Curry that came out with the Carolina Reaper. And I'm like, this looks well, a lot like Rima. Okay. Well, let, let's get on to that because we, we keep we keep skirting this a little bit. But I have some questions. Yeah, no, but I mean, I'm not like, I don't lose sleep over this. So it's just look for dis- disclosure, folks. Ed and I, you know, we get along. We're Facebook friends. Um, and I'm cordial. I mean, we all get along. And I don't lose sleep over this kind of stuff. And um, I, I can't say definitively anything. Some of the things I'm going to mention now, I just want to get your take on it because it's. I've had this question since I first read an article that put these things all together. Ed, when, when he came out of the, the Carolina Reaper, there was a lot of marketing going on. And that, that's one thing you can say about Ed. He is fantastic at marketing. Yeah. But there were many interviews with him and – the amount of different things that he said made up the Carolina Reaper is just a little confusing. First of all, he said that uh, he took a sweet hot pepper from the Caribbean and worked to make it hotter, right? right? That was in 2013. In 2014, he says that there's something called the Sufria pepper from the Caribbean island of St. Vincent and the Naga pepper from Pakistan, they, and he combined mm-hmm. those. Uh, Before that, he said, this was 2012, now he said that they are an Asian, sub-Asian descent and both are hot, so the two different varieties. So from sub-Asian to Asian and then through to the Caribbean, anyway, there's a lot of things going back and forth there. Yeah, yeah, you've followed the history and that's, that's, see, that doesn't really... It doesn't fill me with confidence and that's why I question it, it a little bit. It just means it just all I can say is that I've stuck to my story, one story, and you know the other story is changing. You don't have to explain yourself. I mean, there's a reason that I, I don't know. I'm I can't talking to you that. right now, and I'd, I'd love to talk with Ed if he ever wanted to give yeah, some explanations absolutely. here. It'd be amazing. Absolutely, because I think everybody's got to. A right to defend themselves and have and, an opinion. And it's not, it's not and, that he has to defend it. Listen, I, I, I don't hate Ed. I have no problem with him. I, I think he's he does amazing stuff for the Chile community um, in bringing awareness to people that are not in the Chile community. Um, ultimately, where that leads to and whether it's negative or positive, so be it. But one, one thing I did have a question about. So the Carolina Reaper came out um before that, though, there's there's lots of rumors online saying that you had sent him the Seven Pot Primo. Is, did you send it to him, or did he get hold of it somewhere else, or is that the theory? No, I did. I didn't really. Um, I've never sent. I don't recall sending him any seeds. Okay. You know, he he. When I met Ed for the first time in Lafayette, we had a, a festival here that was largely a a washout. Man, it rained the whole time, and that at that festival. It must have been, I don't even remember what year that was, 2015 maybe, you know, uh, 14. I have to look. But I met Butch T. I met Ed Curry. I met Jim Duffy. I met John Hard. I met Gary Montcalm. I know I'm forgetting somebody. I met a lot of people, a lot of friends. I'm still friends with like Chris Dennis. and They're just good peeps. But – Met a lot of important people at that that kind of like um, festival, and when I met Ed, he told me he had bought Naga seeds from me, and um, I couldn't find any record of that. I looked it up because I was curious. Well, he told me, yeah, you know, he told me a few things like like horticulturally, like his some of his practices that I was just kind of scratched my head on, but. Um, well, if he mentioned you know, he, he said that he had the Naga Viper. He said that that was one half of it. In the Viper, a Primo, something else cross. I, well, this is the thing. The Viper had only been around for two years at that point, and he said he had uh, been working on this since two thousand and six. I think it was. I think he actually said he was working on peppers in the eighties, dude. No, I'm like, I'm look, I'm just, um, I just want people to know. At the end of the day. I know I can't please everybody, and I don't. I shouldn't even try. But I don't lose any sleep at night over this. But this is a big part of my life. You can draw your own conclusions. You can, you know. I noticed that when I used to drink wine and stay up late on Facebook, 
I'd get in a lot of trouble, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so it's like Ed and I were having a divorce and the kids didn't want to see us fight. So I, I've since, you know, backed away from that but you know i've been in, I'm, I'm involved in some things now i can't talk about like you know some projects that i've i've had to talk about things a little bit more or wanted to to let it be known and um that's okay you know it's okay i mean i just i'm still just just all about like people can coexist you can have ford you can have chevy but this is my story and just know that Primo's not trying to make you do anything. You, you know, it's just my opinion. But I really, I really, really wish that you love my pepper. And if you, if you love well, that, I do. And I know it, a lot of other people that do. If so. it brings you happiness, I've, I've accomplished something. You know, and and that's it. You know, but but as far as all the other stuff, uh, you know, I try. I pride myself on being consistent. You know, with what I've, I've what only I've ever heard one story about the Seven Pop Primo, and it's the same story every time. And you know, that's yeah. part of it. When 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 stories change to suit a narrative, or when the narrative keeps getting rewritten, that's when I have question marks. I'm not saying Ed is lying. I'm not saying anything like that, right? I, it's right. I'd, like I said, I'd, lo- I'd love to know it straight from the horse's mouth, but. You know, have some consistency when you're when you're talking about things like this, especially something that you're so you're so passionate about that you're going to be selling it to the world and you know trying to trademark it and trying to make sure that yeah you're yeah. not allowed to commercially sell it and a bunch of other yeah. things that we're going yeah 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 you know it's like that's what I was saying you know earlier I was like you know I could I guess in a strange way I could empathize with, with Monsanto, you know, it's like, you know, you got to like put a G, put a gene in there and you know, it's yours, but it's not me, man. You know, I'm like, I'm totally against all that stuff, but I could see, I could see where it would be, you know, beneficial, but. Well, it's, it was usually beneficial. Uh, it's, it's made millions. And that's, oh, I got that's, a, I got a book that on the shelf called seed money, man. And it's, it's an interesting book. I need to look um, it up. Yeah, look it up. It's an interesting book. Um, and what was I saying? Oh, yeah, this is my philosophy on, on, on peppers and pepper crosses. And this, anybody listening out there, if you do like me and you did things just out of the love in your heart and passion and you maybe you sold some seeds and you, you fixed a few cavities you had in your mouth and you got to eat – as a student, you got to eat a little bit more than ramen noodles this week, and uh, you weren't thinking about things, then that's possibly what could happen, right? I mean, not saying it did, but that's once they leave your backyard, all bets are off. So if you got a cross, be very protective of it, you know, and just know that if you do hand it out or sell it, then you have to face any kind of consequences that happen. Um, and that's that goes currently for what I do. You know, like, you know, I've got other peppers I've worked on the last couple of years, kind of gave it a break with, with the pandemic and having Hudson, uh, my uh, son, who's pushing three now, you know, at, at, at my age, it's, he's a handful. He's a lot of love. It's a lot of work. And, um, and you know, those varieties that I, I had came up with that had some preliminary assay work that was like 1.7 1.9 um like world record stuff i just let slide i just i just put them on ice man i just said you know why, why do i just keep if you want me to continue the work just let me know <laughs> <laughs> i gotta i gotta get a blood sample i gotta get a, uh, <laughs> a couple of polygraphs no. uh 1.7 1.9 yeah, yeah. Assay. I didn't HPLC them, but, you know, assay. I didn't want to, you know, I, I might dust them off since this project that I'm doing right now. Um, there might be more interest, you know. It just, I got jaded with it, man. I mean, there's the whole controversy with the Primo Reaper, but there's also the controversy with the, the BBM and the BMM. And and I'm not making this stuff up. It's It's like, so I think what I'm realizing is that I probably should just do it. It's already all done and just sell the seeds, give out seeds and, and just 
forge forward. Because if I would have never, if you always think about that kind of stuff, you'll never get anything done. If I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't, have, if I would have held my my primo in the backyard, then I wouldn't be eating it. I wouldn't, wouldn't be, be talking I about, it right about it. I wouldn't be talking to you right now. No, because yeah. because I never thought it would take on a world of its own. I never did. And and that's I that's did. that's one thing that I'll I'll say in support of Ed. He recognized there's Greatness. this market. He recognized right. that there's this amazing chili. And if it is yours, he recognized that yours was an amazing chili. He did things in a certain way, and that's fine. But he recognized that this is a way to make money. You didn't go he down put, that route. He put the money. He put up or shut up, you know, and I haven't put up. Yeah. You know, I'm like, you know, I, 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 I mean, look, I've got a wife that's um, – that's very sensible about, about things and runs the household. She pays bills, you know, I'll order to her every now and then, <laughs> but she's, uh, that's her strength. So I'm kind of the idea pie in the sky kind of guy, you know, and I, I don't like the word mad scientist. Uh, I'm just like, I'm a dreamer, you know, you, I'm you a, need your head I, back. I, if you want to be the mad scientist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, it's a funny story. I went into this kind of like, I know it's a little fork in the road here, but when I was playing music in the band, I had this like, the, the big hair. I was wearing black eyeliner because Keith Richards did it. I could do it. <laughs> well, I look more like freaking probably like uh, Mark Bolin or something, you know, T Rex. But, you know, so I walk in this, um, this comic book shop, man. There's these kids playing Dungeons and Dragons. And this kid looks at me, and, and you know, I have psychedelic pants on and all that. It's, it's Versilius the wizard. <laughs> he thought I looked like he said like, he looks. He looks like Versilius the wizard. And so I guess I looked like some kind of electric wizard, man. But uh, anyway, I just thought that you do look a little bit like a wizard. You know, wizard of wizard. Chili's now, now I'm just gray, man. Now I'm just. I have more hair on my my back and my butt than my head. <laughs> Let's so. not talk about gray. I got my hair cut uh, the other day, and I'm looking on the. You know, the, the gown that they give you, and I'm just seeing all this gray, and it's like, oh, hey, oh boy. <laughs> look, dude, at least you're not that calico. I was calico, like the cat. You know, I had, all, I had red, I had, my hair's not naturally red. <laughs> now at least it's all one, almost all one color, you know. So I could just be um, wise, you know, like I look like like I'm, I'm, I'm a wise old man. But in my heart, man, in my heart, I'm like freaking 12. I'm, I'm still, still hey, you got, you got to keep young at heart. So I, I, I wanted to mention one last thing about Ed. Uh, I just want to ask a question and um, just yeah, yeah, shoot. And then I, yeah, we, we can move off him because I, I don't want this to be about him. No, no. I mean, I mean, I, I don't mind. And there's a lot of stuff that I could say and I could bring up that was like people have told me or former people that worked on movies or had interviewed him. And uh, I'm that's all like you know, it's not from me so so it's like uh, it's one of those things where i guess you could chalk it up to a rumor or some of the people that i talk to are pretty pretty reputable so it's it all becomes like circumstantial you know it's like but i'm not look i'm not gonna slander the dude i mean there's a lot of good people working over there at pucker butt people like you know bella and brandon went over there and tom and you know, that for a better life and they seem to be happy. So, um, that's, that's great. But anyway, ask your question. I'm sorry. So no, so he, he made a statement again. I was looking up, there's a, there's a bunch of interviews around the time when the Carolina Reaper was being talked about when it was still called HP 22 B two. or I can't, I can't remember what he called it. Some code name. Um, and he, he made a comment. He said, uh, he said it was the first pepper he had ever seen with a stinger. Now, hmm. that's in 2013. If you're saying that in 2013 and you've been growing chilies and passionate about chilies since the 80s and haven't heard of <laughs> or yeah. seen things like the butch tea or, you know, yeah. some of the others with Even stingers. Scor scorpion, you know. The scorpion's been around for a long time. It's just yeah. phrases like that, you know, and maybe, maybe again, he's just trying to create some buzz about it, but... I, it's, I just don't know. It's, not, it's not a mistake I would make, and I'm not. It, I don't have the experience he has. Yeah, it's, man. Look, dude. When there's people here, 
And then there's industry people here that like, at the end of the day, they're, they're hanging out in the hotel lobby and they're talking shop and they're talking about things that are here that y'all don't know about here. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so another big character in this, that, and, and the funny thing is I actually wasn't too aware of Ed Curry as much as I was aware of Pepper Joe at the time. Pepper Joe was doing so yeah, much he, he marketing. He sold his company, didn't he? Didn't he sell his company? He did. It's still called Pepper Joe, but it's by a, a lady named Joe, I think, that, that's now running it. Oh, okay. Pepper Joe was big online. I'm sure you must have come across him a couple of times. He, you know, I, I Very did talk to him. Man. I, I had a conversation with Pepper Joe and Ed right when the the Reaper came out, and um, and just like said, "Hey, let, we need to talk about this." You know, <laughs> and Let's uh, have a discussion. This they were very good. nice. They, they were very nice. Uh, you know, and. Uh, I've been like very cordial as far as messaging and talking with them and stuff like that. It's not my, you know, I just, I was fishing a little bit, should I say. Yeah. But uh, Pepper Joe, um, a lot of people in the community weren't that keen on him, you know. Um, I didn't have, I never had any bad blood with him or anything, but I definitely saw him. I think he was the marketing guy, you know. Like, he, that's why I say I knew about him more so than I knew about Ed Curry at the time because he was the one pushing the marketing. Yeah. He was going in all the forums and bragging about this amazing chili that everyone needs to watch out for. I had and he bought, was also I had putting bought. a lot of information out there about the process. When I first started growing chilies, like other than like grabbing peppers out of like the master gardener like research <laughs> plot, you know, I'm not supposed to take them. I'm like, you know, open pollinated this way before the primo, but um grabbing seeds and stuff like that i bought a few things from pepper joe i think it might have been ah ahis or something you know like did, lemon drops or so something did you have some really nice jalapenos from those were they good <laughs> <laughs> my shelf fell <laughs> i don't know if you ever heard that one no shelf what oh man that's one for off camera man oh, okay <laughs> Got to know about that one. Um, Mate, that's a little riddle. Maybe somebody will comment. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be somebody in the chat that's going to know exactly what you mean. Um, I, did, I did have a question. Going back, I mean, we're going straight back again to the Seven Pot Primo because um, I'm fascinated about this. It's just, I, I just, yeah, true. you probably didn't realize at the time how important it was to no. the Chile community, how important it was going to become. But in my in my mind, obviously, I built it up. But when when you first tried one, when you saw this with the Stinger, firstly, it looked great. But did you actually try one of the first generation that came through? And, oh yeah, and thought, wait, this is hot. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Like, look, even before that, cutting it open and just seeing the oil in it and stuff, and I was just like, uh, yeah, I didn't pop the whole thing in my mouth at one time. <laughs> that was <laughs> I was smart enough not to do that. I mean, um, but yeah, just cutting it up on food and it's like it's freaking hot. And this is like, this is hotter than the other two, you know. I mean, there people say that after a million Scovilles, you can't tell, but it was substantially hotter. I think Johnny, Johnny says he can, Johnny Scoville. And then I'm, I have this guy, God, I got to think of his name, Jeff Woodcock. Do you know that name? No, no. All right. He's worth discussion. So he <laughs> caught, he wrote me a few times um, saying he practiced the Wilbert Scoville method. Like what? Like a drop? I, yeah, dilution. All this really? stuff, and I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So he's multiple emails, and he's testing the Reaper and the Primo. He's doing all kind of pods, and I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm kind of humoring him, you know, in an email. And then I, I write Tom Johnson, which was the manager of Southwest Biolabs. You know, he's a brilliant guy. He doesn't work there anymore. He's like took a sabbatical. He's like just doing nature and hum banding hummingbirds. And yeah, you know, I tried to get him involved recently with the thing I'm involved in, but uh, he's just comfortable just doing his thing, you know? So um, Tom Johnson, I asked him about Jeff Woodcock. He goes, yeah, he's legit. I was like, come on, man. He goes, no, oh. <laughs> like he's surprisingly accurate with what he's doing like close to what we're doing with HPLC. I was like, you shouldn't well, me. I, I, I still don't believe HPLC is as accurate 
It's got, what, 5% plus or minus error rate. It's, it's not going to be as accurate as the proper Scoville test because that's still indicative. Mm-hmm. But, but then again, it depends on the person so, trying it. But it. Yeah, it's subjective too, so it's kind of weird. But um, it, that's fascinating. That, that's I awesome. Would love to, I, would I wish love, I had the I, patience. I, 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 yeah, I, I reached out to him again recently because I just like, it's been a while trying to, strike up some more conversation i don't even know if he's i hope he's still alive i mean everybody went through the pandemic and some people god forbid didn't fare well yeah. uh i haven't heard from him man and uh but yeah so i tasted the pepper and i knew it had something special but i mean it looked cool you know and it wasn't as cool as it looks now it was starting to get there i mean it didn't look like a bush tea it didn't look like a trinidad scorpion and I, I, I tell people that, you know, what if there was a scorpion DNA in the seven pot from the market? You know, what what if it had some of that? I don't know. But whatever I did when I crossed with the Naga and, you know, about back crossing and when you, you introduce new genes, yeah. you end up with something totally different. And then you have to selectively breed. It's a whole nother game. Um, so I ended up with what I ended up with. And and. I can say like what Ed said, I hadn't seen a pepper with a stinger like that or the warts and all that. Like, well, I mean, the Naga had some, but, you know, I had, I was aware of peppers with, with, with stingers, but this was different. This was different. So, I mean, you Google yourself five years later and then you all over the place. Then you say, well, maybe I should trademark this. And they say, you can't get a trademark on it because it's a common varietal now. Well, Cause you, it, can, can you actually get it. trademarks on chilies anymore? Because I, I know a little story. It's about another well, you, little chili well, in South can, Africa. You can't patent. You can trade like, well, patents like takes money. If you got the right amount of money and lawyers, I'm sure. You can the patent the name, but I don't think so. I think the red, was it the red Savina? Was it? Is that it? Yeah, but that's not trademark, though, is it? Yeah, I think they were the last one to do. Oh, is it like a patent and trademark? Uh, tra- you could trademark it. You could trademark um, a name, you know, like and and. But as far as Ed and I go, I've been told that because the peppers are so similar, neither one of us can do it. Like a visual trademark, because they're both like too similar and they're a common variety. So. Uh. So, folks, if you come out with that great pepper, <laughs> keep it in your backyard, start an LLC, document everything, and then if you want to do – but then once again, you do all this stuff, you might not get anything done, and then you're being a bully. <laughs> so you just – Yeah, don't be a bully, Troy. Come on. Just, just – <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these are. this is me talking in hindsight, right? So I am just kind of like – if I wanted to be a little bit more successful right now and, and, and have a and have more diaper money for Hudson, what do I have done? Well, let, let, let's try and help with that. Any, anybody watching this right now, go and check out Troy's site, especially if you are in the U.S., although you are sold out of seeds right now. You need to get some more stock in there. Yeah, I need to add some more. I, you know, I filled all the orders. I was getting worried because I was just like putting a number, you know, in my inventory. I, I do that, that I as well. I, that I thought I had. <laughs> And then it went boom, and they're gone. I'm like, I hope I have that. Much. So yeah, I've got plenty. Well, I, I just filled the orders. I was like, look, I need to, I need to do it again. And um, and you know, as far as this is a good thing, man, I just switched uh, brokerage for logistics, and uh, I went, I'm going with um, Shippo now, right? Uh, from XBS, and and it looks like they offer better international shipping charge pricing. So I'm thinking about just putting it out there, man, because, you know, there's so many people abroad that want, all right, let's say the seeds, there's a problem with customs, you know, um, international getting seeds, you know, through customs because you have to have proper documentation. It costs a lot of money. I jumped through the, the poodle hoops in the circus to get things done. And but hot sauce, let's just say somebody wants to buy a hot sauce in England. Man, they might pay twenty dollars shipping. Who's going to pay seven dollars for a bottle of hot sauce? They'll do so it. I'm, they will do I'm, it. That's so the I'm, thing. My, my biggest it. customer base is the U.S. About seventy okay. percent of my because my, my main business is the source selling, right? 
Seventy percent of my customers are in and the US, is. and yeah. you know I'm so that, I, I hate it. I, I I want I want people to, to try my sources. I want them to have my sources. I don't want them to pay a fortune for it, but that's unfortunately the name of the that's game. Life. Yeah, you know, and the postage is what it is, and the thing is, people are paying it, and they appreciate well, it because they're getting a good quality product. I need to do it then. I need to do it. You at must. Your advice. I need to do it. It, it, it won't it get just, stopped. It won't get I, stopped. I, you sound like just like me because I was sitting down right there with Kara about a couple years ago when I came out with the premonition. It's a verde, you know, green sauce, and uh, we were eating some pizza or something and drinking a bottle of wine. And uh, a couple glasses, and I looked at the bottle of hot sauce and said, "You know, that kills me. That I have to charge seven ninety nine for that." And she looks at me and says, "Because I live in Cajun country, hot sauce is two dollars and fifty cents, but it's all inexpensive mash, that comes and, in it's water, and, and it's water, and it's vinegar, vinegar base." I know that it's worth the money, but it, like you were saying earlier, it kind of kills me that. People have to pay that kind of shipping on top of it and all that. And and she looks at me and says, Troy, you're drinking a $25 bottle of wine. And she's right. I mean, if you really, if God forbid, not everybody can afford a $25 bottle of wine. It's not something we did, you know, all the time. But it's 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 about if you want it and you can you can try to get it. People, some people will do it. You know, they will, they will bite the bullet or find a way to get it. And I just, my, have to my wife's that. exactly the same as yours. I, I often, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I should drop my prices. You know, I, I just, I, I just want people to get my, and then she's like, but why? You don't have a high profit margin as it is. Your Dang source yeah. is like 80%, 90% chilies, not 80, yeah. 90% water, which these cheap right. sources are. And, right. She she always convinces me, just like just keep at it, right? It is what it is. People are still right. buying your sources, and there you go. Yeah, um, I've seen some. I actually, I, I need to get hold of some of yours. So make sure you get yourself international shipping because I have a series on my channel where I check out different chili sources. Oh, and we'll, I give, we'll, I give we'll my ratings. We'll work it out if I have to make you, you know, just send it to you. You know, don't don't buy it on the website, man. We'll, we'll work it out. Man. We'll but, talk. We'll talk. It, yeah, it'll we'll, be good for you. Hopefully, people will go and buy. Yeah, something. Yeah, no, it's it's something. Not, it's tr- it, it, it's there's like a cherry for the picking when it comes to Primos peppers internationally because there's so many. Man, Philippines. I don't know why the Philippines. I get a they, lot of they, orders from the Philippines. They, they love like, their hot stuff. <laughs> they love hot stuff. They love Primo. They like. I get. You can look at my friends, and and I get so many friend requests from the Philippines. That's great, but can they go buy the hot sauce over there? Can they get it online? No. I mean, what they end up doing is they find family in the states, and they like they'll ship to them, and and people do that with seeds too and stuff. You know, they'll they'll find a way to get it around through family members that that are going back get home. Get yourself or, set up with international shipping. Um, I'm not. I, I need to do it. So I apologize if anybody's out there and thinking I'm being, you know, stuck up or anything. It's pe- not People that. understand. Listen, I've had the conversations. I'll get one person in a hundred that might make a comment about how expensive it is. I can't change it, right? You know, it's, there's sometimes you'll buy one of my hot sauces and, the you know, the shipping might cost more than the sauce. Yeah, yeah. People are still willing to do that because they're getting a quality source. They get to, see, to try right. it. And the same thing will be with yourself. The people that can't afford it, you know, I really feel bad for them. But I am also running a business. I've spent the yeah, last yeah. year growing these things. Okay. I'm processing them, making the sauce. It's all by hand. I'm not co-packing. I'm not, I'm not relying on somebody else to go and make it. And I'm never seeing the end product. I'm making it, right? So I think go ahead. You, you really need to. Just Here, it gives people the Here. option, right? I give away so much, man. I, I'm always like, we do these these markets sometimes, and I'm like, I give away probably too much. And um, you need to look after your wife, family. My wife, my wife's like, try. <laughs> you know, you say it's not about money, but you need we need this to keep things going, and and I'm just the way I am, man. So. I probably just need someone else to control, do that part of the business, you know, and I can just like 
I wish I could. Head. I wish I didn't have to touch anything to do with the business. Yeah. Just, just, just business do the source stuff. stuff. Let my wife um, handle the rest, but that's yeah. not going to happen. But uh, we'll work on that. And, and um, yeah, definitely do yeah. that. I think a lot of my viewers will definitely be interested. They, they love a quality hot sauce, and they realize that quality costs money. 